Hello, everyone. Uh, first, Hello. we want to thank we want to thank the wonderful cast for all agreeing to do this and how nice it is to see you guys. And it was great to get back in touch with everyone. It's um, we've been trying to do a reunion for a while and um, hoping schedules align and it only took a global pandemic to do this. So <laughs> <laughs> silver linings, baby. We'd also like to thank Entertainment Weekly and their United at Home event. So um, uh, we're excited for that and for organizing this virtual reunion and table read. And we're also thankful to Warner Brothers and NBC for letting us do it um, and for their love and support over five seasons of television. Now to introduce this cast and get started. First, you knew and loved him as Chuck Bartowski. Now you know him as Shazam and also pretty damn buff. But to my kids, he will always be Flynn Rider, <laughs> Mr. Zachary <laughs> Levi. Hey! <laughs> Uh, next, we cast her as Sarah Walker, literally the moment she stepped foot onto American soil. One of America's, uh, one of Australia's greatest exports. She will never forgive me for suggesting she should change her last name to Stryker. Fresh from Gilead, Avon Strahovski. Thank you. Hello. He may have seemed gruff, but deep down he has a mushy, sweet sinner. And even though we are jealous of all the Comic-Con fans for their love of Firefly, they eventually learned to love John Casey just as much. Adam Baldwin. Ah! Whoa. <laughs> he is the beard in the title, um, uh, and it is a most important beard, a beard for, full of warmth and humor and kindness and so many concept albums and most of all knowledge, <laughs> Chuck's BSS and America's sweetheart, Josh Gomez. Hey! hey. Oh, John, come on! Hey! Uh, ah, <laughs> she, played, she played Chuck's concerned and caring sister, the one sane person in an otherwise insane world. She's the one who got this table read going today, and we are so grateful for that. Playing Dr. Ellie Bartowski, Sarah Lancaster. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, tall order, finding a man who could live up to his nickname, but did he ever? Dr. Devin Woodcomb to his patients, but Captain Awesome to all forever. <laughs> the hilarious and still just as handsome Ryan McPartland. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Come on, Take Gomez. Off Give it up. Take off your shirt. <laughs> he put the stir in Jester. He sang Fat Bottom Girls at Comic Con <clears throat> to thousands of screaming fans. Lester Patel, aka Vic the High. Oh my God, I exist. Oh, I, can't I exist. Wait. I exist. <laughs> I I so stop so it. <laughs> The oats to his hall, the tenille to his cabin, the straw that stirs the Jetster drink, the king of the guitar, Scott Krinsky. <laughs> the man who kept the buy more running, upper management, but still one of the people, master of seduction, consumer of Subway sandwich, Mark Christopher Lawrence is Big Mike. Oh, yeah, oh. Big Mike. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Ama and amazingly, we also have our guest cast from 309, the From the Beard episode. Our villains today are the amazing Diedrich Bader and Cedric Yarbrough. Woo! And, uh, Woo terrifying yeah. and funny. Yeah. And finally, when you're worried about your girl falling in love with a guy who looks like Superman, it's great to have the actual Superman play the part. That's Brandon Ralph. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank you everybody for being yeah. here. Yeah. I think it's fitting that we introduce the, the rest of the world to our lucky uh, fan winner, yeah. Kyle Fox oh, of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Kyle, thank you so much great. for your donation. Oh, and thank kind. you so much thank for being guys. here. I appreciate that. The man found it not on network television, but on DVD, that once upon a time That's disc right. that we used to use. Mm. And DVD. he's All now watching it with his wife. Kyle, you're immense. We love you. Thanks for being a part of it. <laughs> Kyle. Thank All right. Guys. Thank you. Fedak, Fedak, take us away. Let's do it. It's your castle. Nice. Chuck enters to find Sarah and Sean Casey looking over a file. He can't help but watch their body language. He's still hurting from knowing that Sarah told Shaw her real name. Hey, team, what's going on? You're the intersect, you tell us. Shaw hands Chuck a file, photos of CIA agent. We just intercepted intel that the ring is planning to turn and use a CIA agent against us. And problem is, we don't know who, when, or where. Chuck looks at the photos, no flash. Did you flash? No, uh, let me let me let me try again. <clears throat> no flash. Maybe I'm catching something. You know, there is a flu going around. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. Wow! Wow! <laughs> you haven't flashed in a week, Chuck. Ever since Rave tried to kill Sarah and me, that's a problem. Problem, please. It's just a few off nights. Off nights get agents killed. You need to figure this out because the intersect's not working. 
I can't risk putting you out in the field. What are you saying? I'm saying until you start flashing, you are no longer a spy. You're firing me? Yes. Hopefully just temporarily. No, 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 no. You, you can't do that. Being a spy is all I have. I gave up everything for this. Maybe some time off will do you good, Chuck. Get you functioning again. Yes. Look, I don't need time off, okay? Maybe I'm not flashing because I've got a lot of emotions bottled up. You know, I, I, I broke up with Hannah. I can't talk to my best friend or sister about my life. I'm not a machine. Well, I am a machine, but I'm also a person. You can always talk to us, Chuck. Shaw gets up, stands behind her. Chuck considers Shaw and Sarah. He really can't. No. No, thanks. I don't think that's going to work for me. Well, find something that does work. Because until you do, you're benched. We go off Shaw and Sarah exiting Chuck alone, fired. Now we go to Chuck and Morgan's apartment day. Chuck enters from the bedroom hallway. Morgan's eating some cereal. Chuck heads over to get a bowl of the dough. Morning, roommate. <laughs> Forget something? Milk. Right, forgot. <clears throat> Exceptionally dry meal without it. He heads back to the kitchen and Morgan follows. Yeah, well, you also forgot we made plans for our old school game night. Subway meatball marinara sub and cold. A piece of my heart, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Morgan. I know we had plans, but something came up and I forgot to call. Mm -hmm. That something happened to be breaking up with Hannah? Yeah. Prettiest, coolest girl that ever worked in the Buy More, and I had to find out she resigned by text message. We've been best friends since we were six, okay? And, and, and I've been there for all your breakups. Talk to me, man. I'm your best friend, aren't I? Of course you are. Morgan waits for Chuck to spill. Chuck wants to, but... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to, Morgan. I just can't. Morgan, crestfallen, realizing maybe he and Chuck may no longer be best friends, gets up to leave. Don't be late to work. Morgan, wait, please. I gotta talk to someone. I gotta talk to someone. We cut to a beachside hotel, pool area, Malibu. Austin is relaxing next to Ellie by the pool. They're happy. Things are seemingly back to normal. Austin's feeling great. He kisses Ellie like newlyweds again. This getaway was a great idea, exactly what we needed. You said it, babe. I can't tell you how awesome it feels to be alone. <laughs> just the two of us. Now, just as Awesome leans in to kiss Ellie again, his phone rings. It's Chuck. He hesitates and picks it up. He moves out of earshot from Ellie. Chuck's pacing on the other end of the call. Awesome, thank God you picked up. Well, everything okay, bro? No, no, not really. I broke up with Hannah. Sarah's falling for another guy, and now I'm not flashing. Not only is my life a mess, but my spy Chuck, life Chuck, too. Chuck, Chuck, I went on vacation so I could get away from your spy life, so I could fix things with Ellie. D no, 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 I, I, I don't have anyone else to talk to, Devin. I'm sorry, bro. Remember what you said about discussing your, your spy life? Hmm? I don't know. He sits back down with Ellie. How was that? I don't know. <laughs> Off Ellie, we go back to the exterior of Casey's apartment. Chuck exits and sees Casey trimming some plants. Chuck approaches. Casey ignores him at first. Look, Casey, I know you'd prefer waterboarding to talking to me about my feelings, but I've got no one else to talk to. <clears throat> wow, I, 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 I thought you were going to make fun of me. Thank you for listening. I think, I, I think the reason I'm not flashing is because I have all of this stuff that I, I you know, I, I, I can't get off my chest. Secrets I'm keeping from Morgan and Ellie. I lost Sarah and... Huh? What? Oh. <laughs> Neil Diamond at Red Rocks. Great stuff. <laughs> you say something? I need to get some stuff off of my chest. Well, save your lady feelings for something else. Some of us have work to do. We, we also cut that seed for time, but it was fantastic. I feel really bad about that one now that I hear it again. <laughs> it's back Thanks in. a lot. <laughs> Here we go. So we go to the buy more. Today, Chuck enters. Jeff and Lester and some of the nerds are watching Jeff try to fit an entire apple into his mouth. Chuck sighs at the banality of it all. Now we hear him paged by Morgan. Charles Irving Bartowski, please report to the assistant manager's office for disciplinary action. We cut to Morgan's office, which is actually a supply closet with a little bath up on the wall behind him. Uh, Chuck enters. Please, have a seat. He sits. This is, uh... Never an easy conversation to have with an employee, Chuck. What conversation? Look, I've known you most of my life, and we went through puberty together. Uh, the awkward stage right after puberty, the awkward high school years, your awkward college years, and now our current awkward buy more years. Look, I, I guess that's why this moment is so... <clears throat> awkward? 
Is that what it is? Morgan, what is going on? Something's going on in your life, and a true best friend would share that with his true best friend. You want to know the truth, Morgan? The naked truth, Chuck. Lay it on me like cheese on a tuna melt. Okay, here goes. Again, Chuck can't spill the beans. I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but you're fired. You're firing me from the buy more? What? No, no, you're still my best nerd herder. I need you here. No, I'm firing you as my best friend. We leave Chuck fired twice. How could things get worse? Hey guys, we just wanted to take a minute and also plug, plug our charity that we are um, donating to. The last time I checked today, it was $17,000 or more uh, for Feeding oh, so America. Uh, really remarkable. You guys are always so generous. Historically, you have been, and you are still pretty amazing stuff. Good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Go click donate. Feeding America. Go click donate. Feeding America. Go click donate. Feeding America. Click, click, click. Act one, interior castle day. Shaw, Casey, and Sarah readying to leave on a mission. A dejected Chuck enters. You guys leaving for the mission? So you don't want me to join? We'd love you to, Chuck, but the intersect is not working. Sarah tries one last time to get Chuck to flash. Shows him the file of CIA agent photos again. Look, the agent, the ring, plans to turn is staying at this hotel. There's some typos in this script, by the way. I don't know if anyone's noticed. We got marinara spelled wrong. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But footage of the hotel plays on the monitor. We have no record of a spy being there, so whoever it is, is deep undercover. They look to Chuck again. Did you flash? Still no flash. We need to go. Guys, the team's a man short without me. Not today. I'm taking your place on this mission, Chuck. The ring knows you're alive, Shaw. It's too dangerous for you to go into the field. And I can't leave this team shorthanded. Besides, the ring wants a fight? I'll give him a fight. Chuck sees Sarah I Shaw, his bravery, impressed. Sarah's look to Shaw as one Chuck remembers she used to give to him, and it hurts. Sarah sees Chuck's hurt. You have an important job to do, Chuck. Stay here and monitor us from Castle. Translation, I'm useless. When we get back, I expect this place to look exactly as I left it. Chuck watches Sarah puts on a wedding ring and band. Shaw puts on a wedding band. You newlyweds ready? Let's go. Uh, uh what, what, do I, what am I supposed to do when you're gone? Don't you have a day job? Off them leaving, Chuck's life is falling apart. Interior buy more outside Big Mike's office. Mike's door is closed. Jeff, Lester, and Morgan are doing a little spy work of their own. They're trying to listen in on what's happening inside Big Mike's office. Chuck walks up to them looking for a little companionship. Hey, guys, what's going on? What are you doing? Please, Charleston, please. This is a spy mission. You are not qualified. Please. <laughs> now we hear movement towards the door and everyone backs off, pretends to work. The door opens and two corporate executives exit, Dell and Neil. Big Mike's full of smiles, laughs, really hamming it up for Dell and Neil, shakes their hands as they exit and meets up with two technicians and two inspectors by the front doors. What, what, uh, what's going on, Big Mike? The execs are now out of earshot. Big, Big Mike's smile turns to a frown, fear. Someone's thinking of buying the store. We're closed today so some building inspectors and technicians can come down and kick the top. Oh, sweet, sweet. Need to get the day off? No. Oh. I want to interview everyone, reevaluate the staff. I'm going to fire everyone who's not essential. We're in big trouble, boys. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. <laughs> now we go to a beachside hotel, Sarah and Shaw's room, day, a romantic getaway. Shaw and Sarah are posing as a couple. A valet guy, a valet, wheels their luggage into the room. Enjoy your stay. You two make a beautiful couple. Oh, well done. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so again, it's all up here. <laughs> the valet leaves. Shaw puts his arm around Sarah. They do make a good couple. Off Shaw and Sarah unpacking their bags, revealing spy surveillance equipment, intercut with the Beachside Hotel basement. A telephone operator by the main phone system reveal it's Casey in disguise, tapping into the main phone system. Earwig in, he communicates with Shaw and Sarah. I tapped into the phone mainframe. If the ring calls out again, we can trace it to the room it originated from. Sarah and I'll set up our surveillance equipment, then search for possible targets. Beautiful view, isn't it? I could get used to this. Me too. Uh-oh. Interior buy more appliances day. Big Mike has Chuck, Lester, Jeff, and Morgan huddled up. Inside his office, Dell and Neil peruse personnel files. 
to inspectors and two technicians move around the store, checking the walls, computers, fuse boxes, everything. Listen up, team. These suits are sharks. They'll try to divide us in our interviews, find our weaknesses, look for any excuse they can to fire our ass. Despite all our differences, all we have is each other, okay? So let's, um, let's stick together. This is a blood oath right here. Fellows, fellows, one for all and all for one. They stick their hands in a circle. Dell steps out. Mr. Patel? Yes. <laughs> Inti- interior, interior by more, Big Mike's office. Interview montage. Dell and Neil interview Lester. Before I spill this place's dirty, dirty secrets, I need to know that I'm protected. Me, I, alone. I want diplomatic immunity. Nah, I don't think that's appropriate in this situation. <laughs> Listen, you want the dirt, I want the immunity. Now we cut you into interviewing Fernando. Uh, how long have you been employed at the Bible? Fernando says nothing. He just breaks down into tears. Cut to them interviewing other people who work at the Bible. Um, now come back to Dell and Neil interviewing Lester. At Golden Boy Charles, slacker. Always on installs or having yogurt. For some reason, yogurt with his ex. Thomas Jefferson Barnes, alcoholic. Big Michael spends half his days fishing, and the only reason Morgan Grimes has a job is Big Mike shooping. Yes, you heard me, shooping his mama. <laughs> Dell and Neil are now interviewing Big Mike. <laughs> it's an interesting group of employees you put together here. And they scared me too. Uh, <laughs> but I got part of the house. Don't I? Don't I? That's right. A man with a Stanford degree is working here. You see, I'm not just a manager. I, I, I'm a people person. Talent follows me. So, uh, what are the normal working hours you keep? How dare you, sir? Would you ask that question to a white man? <laughs> Shame on you, sir. I would. <laughs> you, sir. <laughs> and here, buy more appliances today. Morgan is pacing back and forth. He is freaking out before his interview. Chuck approaches him. Morgan, I need to talk to you. Uh, clearly you don't, or I wouldn't have fired you as my best friend. Can, can, I, can I just have a minute, please? No, not now, Chuck. Okay, I'm, I'm freaking out about this interview. You'll do fine. You'll do fine. Besides, it's just to buy more. You can always get another job. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it may not be the end of the world to you, but I, I don't have a Stanford degree, Chuck. I don't know how to do anything else but to buy more. I mean, this job is all I have. And this hair and the beautiful... Morgan heads off. Chuck can't seem to get anything right with him. Now Neil steps out of Big Mike's office. Chuck, Chuck Bartowski? Huh? Interior buy more Big Mike's office. Dell and Neil, friendly as can be, peruse Chuck's file. Well, it's, it's an impressive resume. So what's a Stanford grad doing working at a buy more? Uh... <clears throat> Let's just say the buy more offers more opportunities than initially meets the eye. Oh, really? Well, for for instance, for um, for instance, it allows me to work with my best friend every day. Oh, uh, your best friend? Morgan Grimes, the assistant manager. Oh, based on your track record, you you're the cream of the crop at this uh, buy more crop. Uh, how come you're not the assistant manager? Well, because the right man already has the job, you know. I l- listen. I hear you might be making changes, and even though I look good on paper, I'm not the cream of the crop. Morgan Grimes is. Off them, interested, eyeing Morgan's file. Now we cut to the beachside hotel basement. Casey by the phone server. A call comes in. He taps into it. Connects. Contacts Shaw and Sarah. The ring just made a call from the hotel. I'll connect you in while I trace it. Now we're in Sarah and Shaw's room. They have a bevy of surveillance equipment set up, and they listen in with Casey to a ring agent on the line. The target is by the pool. Six foot two, well built. He's wearing a red and white bathing suit. You got that, Walker? We got it. Sarah and Shaw scan the pool area from their window with high power binoculars. We angle from left to right past sunbathers, keep panning until we reveal a red and white bathing suit. Tilt up to reveal the target is Captain Awesome. A waiter hands he and Ellie Pina Coladas. Did you find the target? Uh, yeah, we found him. Off Awesome and Ellie toasting, unaware they're in danger. Now we're back to the buy more in Big Mike's office. Dell shakes Chuck's hand before he exits. This Morgan sounds great, Chuck. Can't wait to meet him. Chuck exits. Dell shuts the phone, shuts the door behind him. And now Dell pulls out a ring phone, speaks into it. Get the others in here. 
A beat later and the two technicians and the two inspectors enter. We realize they're ring agents also. Dell turns the blinds. He indicates Chuck at the nerd her desk to all of them. Who is this guy? Agent Carmichael. Looks like Shaw left him behind to man the fort. Should we abort the mission? No, we lured Shaw away from his base. With him not here, this is our best chance to infiltrate it and recover everything he has on us. Have you found the entrance into his base yet? No. We don't have much time. We need to find it fast. Do you want us to take out Carmichael? Not yet. Let's keep interviewing employees and make sure Shaw didn't leave any other surprises behind. Besides, maybe we can use them to our advantage. Interior buy more appliances, intercutting. Lester has some spy gear from the store out. He holds the small recording device on the window of Mike's office, presses record, only hears the following. Chuck says Grimes is his best friend. We can use the two of them to our advantage. Hmm? What do you want me to do about the others? Hmm? You need to be conservative here. Terminate the rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now the doors to Mike's office open as the technicians and inspectors exit. Lester quickly rushes off. Off Dell's point of view, off Dell's point of view, watching Chuck by the nerd herd desk, unaware the ring is in the buy more because he's not flashing. End of Act One. Now I thought was good. This is a good show. I'm going to tell you. Ah. I don't know how many people get sent these, but uh, like DM my Instagram messages and 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 uh, 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 Twitter messages are often uh, uh, full of people sending messages of like their kids, like babies and stuff that love the Chuck theme song so much that they all dance to it when their parents are watching the show all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's my son has to dance. Baby. My son, yeah. every show has to get up and do a dance to it. Yeah, yeah. man. Like you guys picked Shout a great Kate. theme song. For, yeah, full on. Act two. We're back at the Beachside Hotel. It's a basement hallway. Casey removes weapons from his phone operator bag as he talks to Sarah and Shaw. The call came from room 4305. I'll head there, search the room. Sarah and Shaw listen in, ready to move out. Sarah and I'll go to the pool, pull Devin and Nellie out of harm's way. We cut to Castle, where a board chuck is in Castle, his feet up, music blaring, yell, risky business. He has a set of flashcards, bad guy pictures on the front with their names and rap sheets on the back. These were actually in the show. These were Miller and Rosenbaum, some of the writers from the show. They're very, you know, it's just their idea of a joke. You know, and um, uh, he's still not flashing. <laughs> Who is that? The uh, Condor. Jackal. Damn. Chan Min Chi. I thought I had that one. Chuck Board eyes the empty castle, dials his cell. At the Beachside ho uh, Hotel, we're in the basement hallway. Casey slinks down the hall towards room 4305. He has his gun drawn full spy mode. His cell rings. It's Chuck. This better be good, Bartowski. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just checking in on the mission to see if you guys need anything. Why? You flashing? He looks at his flashcards one more time. Uh yeah, no, no. But, but, you know, but, but, but feed me the rock. Maybe I'll, something will pop, you know? I don't have time for this, Bartowski. Oh, oh, only as good as your last flash, huh? Huh? Casey grabs. Well, was he just out? Chuck now leans down to pick up the flashcards from the floor. As Chuck bends down on a frame, we see that above him in the security monitors, the inspectors and technicians checking out the various rooms of the Biomore with their ring equipment. By the time Chuck pops back in the frame, they've cleared frame and there's no one, there's no one around. Chuck eyes the monitors, no sign of danger. Off Chuck, heading off the ca out of castle. We go back to our uh, beachside hotel pool area. Ellie and Awesome are at the pool. It's sexy, sipping, uh, you know, drinks. They're having a blast. Awesome is calm, relaxed. Um, and then... Getting away is the best thing we could have done, babe. I know I haven't been the same guy lately, but since we got here, I got to tell you, I feel awesome again. Me too. To us. No work, no stress, no problemos. They finished their drinks. Mm. Oh, two more pina coladas coming right up. This is our guest up and heads over. We follow Awesome and all of a sudden two hands reach out and grab them and pull them out of the way. But it's not bad guys, it's Sean and Sarah. What are you two doing here? You can't be here. 
Hey, I just recovered my awesomeness. We got a tip that the ring was going to turn an agent staying at this hotel. You. Awesome face drop. Me? Well, I'm not an agent. Chuck said I was in the clear. Are Ellie and I in danger? I don't know. I don't know. We go to the buy more the nerd her desk. Jeff and Morgan watch as the inspectors and technicians examine the store. Can't believe they're selling the buy more. What are we going to do? We're not fit for normal society. We'll perish in the real world. If I can't work, I can't drink. And if I can't drink, I can't work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think these guys are serious about buying this place. They're going through here with a fine tooth comb, even checking lockers. Neil exits Big Mike's office. A buy more employee exits with him. Jeffrey Barnes. Jeff eyes the inspectors, grabs Morgan, scared. You got to help me, Morgan. I've got contraband in my locker. Oh, what what kind of contraband? Just a little something I use to take the edge off a stressful day. Please, if they find it, I'll be fired for sure. Mr. Barnes? Morgan, please. Yeah, okay, fine, fine. Morgan heads off to the break room, and we go to the hotel, caller's room 4305. This is the one case he's heading toward, and I've been told that my action description isn't cool enough or macho enough for Adam Baldwin, so he's going to handle this part. <laughs> Bang! Dynamic entrance. The door is kicked in. Flashbang, if we can clear it with the hotel. Casey storms in, gun drawn. The room appears empty. He clears the bathroom. <laughs> Odd. And now he notices the phone. Approaches. Reveal a ring phone is connected via a cool, high-tech device to the hotel phone. Off, Casey. What the hell? I mean, feedback, you know. I, I, that was pretty good. I, I remember that shot. It was like it was like um, you come to, came in the door. We had like a fake flashbang, right? And then you came and approached the phone, like in the in the foreground, right? Yeah. Yeah, we cleared it with the hotel. What an yeah. what an exciting production note to have inside your script here. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> this has definitely not been done in so many years. It's fantastic. Um, it's a real thing. So here we go. We go to the nerd herd desk. Chuck, unaware of any danger, approaches Big Mike, Jeff, and Lester. What's well, screwed, Vartowski? What's going on? Um, the spy work paid off. Obvi. Obvi. I mic'd Big Mike's office. All I got was a few seconds, but uh, check it out. Lester plays the sound of the recording device. <laughs> Chuck says, Grimes is his best friend. We can use the two of them to our advantage. <laughs> what, do you want, what do you want me to do about the others? We need to be conservative here. Terminate the rest. Chuck considers it odd. They're going to fire the entire store except you and Morgan. <laughs> easy, easy, easy there. Easy there, big boy. Where is Morgan? We cut to the break room of the buy more. Morgan's open Jeff's locker. In the back of the locker, Morgan sees a bottle and a rack. <laughs> 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 so he's in the kidnapping. I don't know. Yeah. He grabs him, shuts the locker. Now he hears the inspector approaching off screen. Let's see if we can find anything in the break room. Morgan quickly puts the contraband back in the locker and shuts it so no one, he's not caught with Jeff's contraband red handed. He quickly hides. Then, from Morgan's POV, he sees the inspectors pull out a high tech device and start scanning the walls. A readout of the device gives a thermal imaging look of whatever scanned. And then what they see is suddenly the scanner reveals a secret passage to Castle. Found something. There's a tunnel behind the locker. Now they inspect the side of the locker and wall. They use an infrared device that shows the invisible to the naked eye a fingerprint panel hidden in the wall. Fingerprint scanner. This must be it. Get Dell and Neil. Tell them we found the CIA base. Morgan can't believe what he's just heard. Now, inspector number two, exit, well, all these people leave. They take their devices. He attaches part of it to the fingerprint scanner of the locker. Uh, all these things happen, but they, they open the door. Readout device now starts running every fingerprint possibly there is. Millions fly by at a time. Suddenly, zip, airlock give. The locker opens off the wall, revealing a secret entrance to castle. That could have been written so much simpler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like That's that you gave out. us the sound effect. <laughs> Morgan's wide eye. Wow, no. Now Dell and Neil enter with inspector number two. Good work. Let the others know we found Shaw's base. Neil takes out his ring phone. Text message as more text the message as Morgan watches them all disappear inside. 
Now the lockers start to shut off. Don't do this, Morgan. Off Morgan, rushing out and slipping inside just before the secret door closes. We're in an underground passageway. Morgan creeps down it. He watches as the ring agents disappear down a hall. He follows them, amazed at the underground tunnel. Now he turns a corner and he realizes just how big this place is. This is Castle. Morgan's jaw drops as he eyes the super high-tech CIA base and he eyes it in wonder. He spies Dell and Neil and the inspectors, inspecting it. Morgan hides and listens. Clever. So many words. Putting a CIA base under an electronics store. Neil approaches the castle mainframe. Every piece of intelligence Shaw's on the ring is in here. We'll be putting a dagger through the heart of CIA's operation by taking it out. All right, Neil, you're on. Cut off all communications in and out of the store. Then break into the mainframe, find and destroy everything they have on us. Then blow this base sky high. Be a pleasure. <laughs> off Morgan realizes these are bad guys. He sneaks out. We go back to the beachside hotel, the snack bar this time. Sarah Shaw and Awesome. Awesome's freaking out. He's paranoid. I, I gotta get it. I gotta get Ellie out of here. I gotta, I gotta get us both out of here. Keep it together, Devin. We'll figure it out. Sean now gets a text from Casey. We've been set up. Abort the mission. What was that? I'm so sorry. False alarm. Well, so, so Ellie and I are safe? Yes. Try and enjoy the rest of your vacation, okay? Sean and Sarah head off. Awesome freaked out eyes Ellie, who's sunbathing, unaware. Awesome's mojo is gone yet again. We go to the hotel, a caller's room. Casey shows Sean Sarah the ring phone, the contraption. Casey puts the phone in his bag after he explains. The phone works remotely. It was a setup. They were luring us here. Why would they, why would the ring lure us here? It's not where they lured us to, it's where they lured us from. The ring knows I'm alive, which means they know I'll have a base of operations somewhere. <laughs> they sent us here, so I abandoned my base so they could recover all the intelligence we have on them. They weren't after Devon. They're after Castle. Chuck's back there, and he's not flashing. He's a sitting duck. Oh, shit. They race out of there. We go, we go to the Bymore hallway near the break room. Chuck and Morgan head through the Bymore looking for each other. They find each other. We, Chuck, we need to we talk. We need to talk. Morgan. Uh, just... <laughs> me, me first, me first, me first, OK? Trust me, whatever you're going to say is nothing compared to what I've got. Okay, Morgan, shoot. Okay, you, you know how our whole lives we've always wanted something exciting to happen to us, something to take away the doldrums of our boring existing? Uh, boring existence? <laughs> well, it just did. What, what did? Chuck, there's a secret underground CIA base underneath the buy more. I, I know, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. The, the people claiming to buy the store are bad guys. They're called, they call themselves uh, the ring. I don't know, imagine that. Uh, Morgan, how do you know all this? Okay, I, I was hiding, and, and I saw them enter the base through an entrance behind our lockers. So, so I followed them, saw and heard everything. Hey, look, 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 I, I know this is a lot to handle, but you need to get it together, okay? Because we are in real danger now, Chuck. Listen, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't freak out. We go off Chuck. He can't believe that Morgan knows the big, gigantic secret. Um, he's freaked out, and we end act two. Go click donate. Feeding America. Oh, donate. Go click donate. Yeah. Feeding America. Go click donate. Morgan is such an advocate for Chuck. He's such a fan of Chuck. There's so much love there. It's like there's a tendency to like to be like the you know to be hurt, but like in the end, it's like my guy is great. My guy, and it's like and it's awesome, and you you, you get, you're just so great. In this scene. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Act three. Interior. Buy more. Hallway near the break room. Chuck and Morgan are post bombshell. We need to figure out what to do, Chuck. Uh, we should call the police. Great idea. Chuck takes out his cell phone, dials Casey. The phone has no signal. It's dead. What's wrong? There's no signal. Interior van moving, intercut. Casey and Sarah in their cells as Shaw drives. Chuck's not answering his cell. The buy more landline's down. I can't get through either. Often worried, Shaw hits the gas and speeds furiously down the freeway back to the buy more. The bad guys probably cut off communication to the store. I, I, truth is, by the time the cops got here anyway, it could be too late. So <clears throat> we need to handle this now. We are not going to do anything except get everyone out of the store. Chuck, these people are going to blow up a CIA base underneath the store, okay? We are America's and buy more's last chance, okay? Last line of defense, and we need to fight back. Morgan, this is real life. 
not a video game. People get hurt. There's no reset button. Okay, I, I, I know you're scared, Chuck. Okay, it's okay. Not everyone has the stomach to be a hero. I'll just, um, I'll go get Jeff and Lester. It's fine. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine. I'll help you on one condition. We get everyone else out of the store and we keep what you told me a secret, okay? You're right. You're right. No reason to put everyone else at risk. Okay, consider our secret on lockdown. Interior by more sales floor day. Chuck and Morgan head out of the sales floor. We see shots of the front doors being shut and locked. Shots of the nerds grabbing everything they can find in the store and stuffing against the doors. Slow cookers, washers, dryers, television. Big Mike watches with pride. Le Lester and Jeff stand with him. What is going on? Oh my goodness, Mr. Questions. We're locking down the store. We're refusing to leave until they give us our jobs back. These corporate fat cats think they can take whatever they want. They can take our dignity. They can take all our hot women. They will not take <laughs> our jobs. They will never take our stuff. Bye bye. Mike, locking down the store, bad idea. You want to run away and with your tail between your legs? Fine. But I'm staying here and fighting for my job. Taking over the buy more is not only illegal, it's dangerous. Jeff pulls out a switchblade. The final beat is Mike, Jeff, Lester, and Fernando raise the buy more flag over their mound. For a second, as they raise it, we recreate the famous photo from Iwo Jima. Mike plants it and snap. Take a picture of the nerds cheer. Chuck now sneaks off towards the hallway near the break room. Chuck, with no one around, adjusts his spy watch. We hear a static crackle, no reception. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, Shaw, Casey, anyone, does anyone read me? Interior, the orange, orange freezer, intercut. Sarah and Shaw have just arrived. Sarah's trying to get into Castle. The computer system denies her eye scan. We're locked out. Someone overrode our security access. Sarah, Sarah, read me. They block on change. Frequency. <laughs> Chuck adjusts the frequency. Let's start. Eh, pero me sentados, por favor. Can you hear me? Chuck, Chuck, we hear you. What's going on? The ring is inside Castle. They came in posing as buyers who wanted to purchase the store. Okay, Casey's on his way. He'll come through the Buy More front entrance and get you out of there. No, 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 the store is locked down. The boy, the Buy Morons think they're all being fired and they're staging a sit-in. It's too dangerous. You need to get them out of there. How? They won't listen to me. Just sit tight, Chuck. We'll figure a way out of this. Before Chuck can get another word in, Morgan approaches. Chuck turns off his watch so as not to reveal he's a spy. Morgan's got some mace and he hands one to Chuck. I'm a kid stockpile in case the Russians attack Red Dawn style. Ready to save the day, soldier? I don't think we should do this. Chuck, these guys are trying to blow up a CIA base. We're running out of time and we need to step up. Morgan, you don't want to do this. Trust me, you don't understand. No, Chuck, you don't understand. Okay, I've been a loser all my life and now's my chance to finally be a hero. Then they enter the break room as two inspectors appear with guns on them. Off them caught, interior castle, the dojo. Chuck and Morgan are handcuffed to each other, back to back, sitting in the dojo. Dell has taken Chuck's spy watch. The two inspectors hold their guns on Chuck and Morgan. Dell opens his briefcase. Inside is a torture kit. He chooses a scary, sharp, straight razor. You're all alone, Agent Carmichael. I've locked your team out of the base. No one can get in to help you. Wh who's Agent Carmichael? This guy's crazy, Chuck. He, he thinks you're a spy. You think I'm a spy? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> we work at the Buy More, okay? And, and if you just let us go, I promise we won't say anything about you being here. Right, right Chuck? Not a word. Zip. Locking it down. Okay, that's a, that's a sharp-looking razor. We've searched the base's mainframe. Shaw's files aren't there. We know he's hiding them in here. Tell us where they are, Agent Carmichael. Trust me, the alternative is extremely unpleasant. There's no need for torture. Even if I was a spy, which I'm not, my training would have taught me to withstand it. So, you know, torture would be useless anyway, right? That's why we're going to torture him. You made the mistake of telling us the bearded fellow is your best friend. You said that about me, but thanks. <laughs> but for the last time, where are the files, Chuck? Guys, please, this is ridiculous. 
I know everything about Chuck Bartowski, everything, all right? He, he's been my best friend since I was six. Chuck Bartowski is not a spy. Dell moves the razor closer to Morgan's neck. Mm. Mm, Chuck, please, please tell him the truth, okay? Just tell him you're not a spy. Wait, 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 stop. Morgan, the truth is, the truth is I'm a member of the joint NSA CIA Black Ops team stationed here in Burbank. I have a class six clearance level and my code name is Charles Carmichael. Morgan, I am a spy. Don't freak out. Off Morgan, realizing it's true. Holy shit. End of act three. Woo! All right. Donate, donate, click and feed America. Donate. It's like that's a, yeah, the script was great. And then just like you guys were so fantastic. In the scene, scene. Up, all of everybody like, was so good. So I mean, all, yeah. but that, but that was just the love and just like the where it goes between the two of you. It was, it was one of my one of my favorite moments. One of my favorite scenes of the ones we're about to do. I still got goosebumps. Yeah. I did too. I totally got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> everybody always loved that it wasn't that he wasn't upset about it. You know that turn that yeah. what you think is you know that was always that that yeah. was just a great yeah. sort of way to go with that, obviously. And it makes perfect sense, obviously, but it still pays off, and it pays off really well. Let's go. Act four. We start in Castle Dojo. We come right back in from commercial. Morgan's stunned. Dell and the inspectors are ready for with their torture instruments. You're a spy. Morgan, remember when I said not to freak out? You're freaking out. You're a spy? Stay with me, man. It's okay. You two can kiss and make up later. Where are the Shaw files? We've got visitors. Colonel Casey and Agent Walker decided to join the party. Oh my God. K Casey and Sarah are spies too? Dell's annoyed. He turns to Chuck and Morgan before leaving. Looks like you have some catching up to do. Excuse me while I take care of your friends. We'll save the torture for later. But just Chuck and Morgan. Morgan's very upset, devastated. Chuck never told them. Shocked. I can't believe it. All this time you've been keeping this a secret? Look, you have no idea how hard it's been not telling you, Morgan. Lying to you about where I've been, making plans and breaking them. I'm so sorry, but I, I just, I couldn't tell you because I had to protect you. Wow. My best friend is a spy? This is the greatest news I've ever heard! This all makes sense now! It's why we stopped hanging out, stopped, stopped talking. I thought I lost you, buddy, but you were just out saving the world? <laughs> Chuck! Chuck, I am I am officially rehiring you as my best friend. <laughs> Thanks, Morgan. So, how did this happen? I mean, did they recruit, recruit you at Bymore or, or at Stanford? Dude, dude, we're about to die here. There's there's no time for, oh wait, that was silent. Let me die, hold on a second, jump my thing. <laughs> so how did this happen? Did they recruit you at the Bymore at, at Stanford? Dude, we're about to die here, okay? There, there's no time for secrets. Okay, okay, Morgan, you really want to know? Well, it all started two and a half years ago with an email from Bryce Larkin. We go from Chuck spilling the beans over some really cool music, which we can't do right now, oh, to the fr front door of the Buy More, where Casey knocks on the front door. Big Mike, Jeff, and Lester approach. Mike sides open the door for Casey. Shots to the piles of stuff that are blocking the door. What the hell's going on in there? The store's been bought. We're all getting canned except for Bartowski and Grimes. We're staging a protest to take down the man. I want in. Whoa, 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 there, giant. How do we know that we can trust you? They're not a spy for the man. Because the only thing I hate more than anarchists and hippies are the fat cat suits they grow up to become. Welcome aboard, my brother. Yeah, no, really good point. Well argued. Well argued. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the delay. Casey enters this door. Um, uh, we go into Castle where Dell and Neil watch a monitor which shows Sean Sarah inside the... The orange orange, unable to crack the computers and gain entry. <clears throat> What's going on? Good news, bad news. Neil pulls out an oval shaped object from 302 and 305. These are episodes of the show. Shows a disc inside. Good news. We found what we're looking for. I uploaded it to headquarters. Uh, bad news? Colonel Casey's in the buy more. Could be a problem. Not if he's dead. Kill him. What the hell is that noise? As the inspectors leave, the entire store is now sitting around the nerd desk, listening to the Jeff performing CCR's fortunate son. 
The Bymorans stand in long arms around each other, swing to and fro, playing the song. Two fools about need to live a fly. We the world wide moon. I'm the best down to the chief. All the clever cannon are you, Lord? Hear me. Hear me. I'm the fortunate one. Yes, thank you, Jeff Star. Thank you, Jeff Yes, I'm freezing, Vic. Yes. You're freezing up. <laughs> Although I think I think you we might cut a little bit of that for Tom. <laughs> as usual, as Tom usual. Orange. Okay, so we go to Orange Orange. We're there working feverishly at the computer system as Catherine Shaw approaches. Oh, I can't get into Castle or the mainframe. I can't override their encryption. You'll never get in. They locked it down. Casey's in the store. Said there's no sign of Chuck. He's been taken. Look, this is a doomsday scenario. They're probably torturing him as we speak. And if he talks, they'll have access to our most secure files. What are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. Castle has a self-destruct program built into it in case of a catastrophic event like this. Shaw starts to bring up the self-destruct program on the orange-orange keyboard. Sarah stops him. No, no, you can't destroy Castle. Chuck's down there. And so is every piece of intelligence we have. Not just on the ring, everything, Sarah including the schematics on how to build the Intersect 2.0. No agent's life is worth that level of security breach. Shaw, please give Chuck five more minutes for me. I'm sorry, Sarah, but you can't think about Chuck right now. You have to think like a spy. I am thinking like a spy. Look, Chuck is a member of my team and he has served his country well. For all he's done, the least we can do is give him five more minutes. Shaw, I, Sarah, he knows that a spy should never do this, but for Sarah, he will. Okay. Five minutes. So we cut to the buy more break room and a criminally long piece of uh, writing here. Casey walks into the break room. He's got his gun pull, pulled. He puts his fingers on the scanner and nothing. Now he takes out a toolkit and a computer device. Starts working on the fingerprint pad to try to access it. As he does, the technician suddenly arrives through the castle entrance. They get the jump on Casey. That's him. They shoot. They see a big fight. The guns scatter out. Uh, they hit them. The guns scatter out. They shut his locker, leaving the gun behind. Casey fights them, knocking both their guns out of their hands. The guns scatter out of eye shot. The two guys are too much for Casey, and now they pin him down, ready to drag him down into castle. That's when Jeff walks in, high as a kite. He heads toward his locker. Uh, he opens it, takes out his bottle and rag as they fight for, for partially oblivious. Peace out, man. Make love, not war. <laughs> you want to hit? The bad guy's turn, huh? The distraction gives Casey just the moment he needs to deck technician one. He knocks out the cold. He takes out the other guy just as well, putting him in a chokehold. Casey's in trouble. Will he be choked out? Except that Jeff jumps into the back of the technician and places the ether rag over his mouth. Jeff holds his hand over ether, his ether <laughs> over his mouth, the other hand over the nose until the technician number two needs oxygen, breathes deeply into the ether rag. Technician two struggles for a while, but slowly loosens up his grip on Casey, releases him. Casey gasps for breath. Technician two's eyes glaze, high as a kite. Fight the power. Real <laughs> Casey gets his Peace breath out. back, realize Je Je realizes Jeff's obliterated. Peace <laughs> out. <laughs> Jeff leaves, ties the kite, gives the Casey the peace sign. Casey tries to work on getting into Castle, but to no avail. Down in Castle, Morgan and Chuck are still handcuffed. Chuck finishes telling Morgan everything. And that's how it happened. So now I have this thing in my brain, the intersect, and it doesn't work. Any more questions before we die? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one question. If Sarah's your handler, does that mean she was a beard? That the entire relationship was fake? Chuck, that's awful. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we, we, we never had sex. No, no. I, I mean, it's a... Wait, you never had sex? <laughs> I was in the original. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's awful that you have to pretend to be in a relationship with someone that you love. Look, it's over between Sarah and I, Morgan. Oh, it's not. You become a good liar, but not that good, okay? You lied to me for three years, but I always knew you loved her. I mean, I saw the way you looked at her. We all did. You can't deny it, Chuck, okay? Tell me you don't love Sarah. Chuck considers this. He does. You're right. I do love Sarah. Yeah. I told myself I didn't, that I wouldn't, that I couldn't, but I do. Morgan, you have no idea how long I've waited to get this all off my chest. Thank you. 
Chuck smiles, a big wide smile. Now Dell, Neil, and the two inspectors enter. Morgan sends his impending death. Get them out of here. Kill them. Lose the bodies. Take me later. I'm about to die. Chuck finally shared his feelings. His mind is clear. The intersect 2.0 kicks in it, and Chuck eyes all the weapons in the dojo. Just as they're about to pull Morgan away, it happens. Chuck flashes. Kung Fu, Jiu Jitsu, Aikido, co fighting. No, you're not. As, and what happens is an epic flip in fight where essentially director Zachary Levi uses every implement inside this place to beat the shit out of these inspectors. People fly all over the place, inspectors go down, um, and then I'm at uh, he cracks somebody in the jaw, and now, uh, and now an inspector grabs the samurai sword from the wall and attacks. Morgan, sword! Morgan grabs the bigger samurai sword, tosses it to Chuck, who now wields it dangerously. Inspector 2 eyes his little knife compared to the sword. Oh, looks like mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> Had, to Had to do it. Now they, now they fight. The fight destroys the dojo. Chuck's amazing, eventually disarming him. Now Chuck uses the butt of the sword to knock him out. Behind him, Dell shakes off his blow, comes to. He stands up, grabs the knife, and heads toward Chuck. Chuck takes a stance, ready to attack. Just as Dell attacks, we hear a thunk. Dell falls to the ground, oh. knocked out cold. Reveal Morgan standing behind Dell. He KO'd him with a bow from the wall. Morgan, are you okay? Yeah. Wow, Chuck, that was incredible. You were like Bruce Lee's Tagal and Van Damme all rolled up into one. That's my best friend. Yeah. We cut to the orange horn, where Shaw hands on, which Shaw's hand on the button, ready to start the castle self-destruct. Casey entered. Couldn't get in. We're locked out. Shaw eyes them all solemnly. This is awful, but he has to do it. Time is up. A beat as they all consider this. Can't bear what's to become when suddenly we hear the castle door open. Steam rises through the frame. Sarah, Casey, and Shaw turn, pull guns quickly, aim at the door. Now, from out of the steam, a figure emerges. A hero. An epic. Reveal. Morgan Grimes. We see a stunned look on all their faces. Guns now lowered. Morgan gets his hero moment. Bag him and tag him, Sarah. Or should I say, Agent Walker. <laughs> <laughs> off, off, uh, appearing behind them. End of back four. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Go, donate, yeah. go, donate, go, beat America. <laughs> donate. Finally, somebody in, like, obviously having Devin know the secret is one thing, but that was still kind of, you know, not the intimacy. Like, in this episode, I'm constantly trying to talk to somebody, and I can't talk to the right person because I can't talk to my best friend about all of it. And as a, in a Zach-Josh relationship, I was so happy that all of a sudden we could now collaborate in the spider world and get to do more fun stuff together and as a character as chuck i didn't have to keep lying to my friend all the time and then i was so stoked when eventually i got to tell ellie as well and it just wasn't this oh what was the helicopter i don't know there was a helicopter that landed in the courtyard i don't know I didn't hear it. <laughs> for <you> bears know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> act five interior castle night chuck sarah sean casey talk at the table Morgan is inside holding a cell. We can't hear the conversation. Shaw is irate. We see Morgan on a live feed. We'll just have to put Grimes in witness protection. Move him back out to Burbank tonight after dark. Whoa, 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 hold on. Morgan's not going anywhere. He knows your secret, Chuck. He's not the only one. Awesome knows and we didn't put him underground. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome's awesome. Grimes is a moron. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. And look, Chuck, it's too dangerous. We have no reason to believe we can trust him. We have 22 reasons we can trust him. That's how many years he's been my best friend, all right? Morgan may have, have his faults, but one thing he is, he is loyal. He'd never betray me or my secret. He's right. And I'm flashing. I, I, I'm flashing again, guys. I'm a spy again because I have my best friend back. Sarah sees Chuck's need for someone to share with. She used to be that person for him. If you guys need the intersect, then I need him. All right, so Morgan Grimes is going to stay in the only place he belongs, which is the Burbank Bymore. Shaw eyes Chuck, realizes he's serious. Sighs, then hits a button, and the doors to the cell open. Now Morgan exits and approaches Chuck. You're free, Morgan. Everything's going to be okay. God help us. <laughs> yes! Does this mean I'm part of the team? Walk before you run, buddy. Chuck and Morgan hug. Morgan and Chuck head towards the stairs, walking and talking. Hey, this calls for a celebration. 
What do you say to an old school game night, huh? Duck hunt, all right? Subway meatball marinara with extra jalapenos. Just the two of us. Chuck Eye, Sarah, and Shaw, a couple. He's lost the girl for now, but he's regained his best friend. Yeah, just the two of us. A little meatball madness, if you will. Mm -hmm. The two best friends are heading out of Castle, and we angle on Shaw and Sarah. <laughs> I have to tell you, Walker, your faith in Chuck was warranted. You were right about it. I'm a very good judge of character, and I was right about you, too. Mm. How they kiss. <laughs> wow. Oh. 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 Their passion. Interior by more nerd her desk night. The nerds sit around. They know that they can't that uh, that they can't last forever. They've lost their adrenaline buzzes, have adrenaline hangovers, and now the phone rings. They stare at it until Mike picks it up. Buy more. This is Craig Rogers from Buy More Corporate. Who am I speaking with? This is Big Mike, the store yeah. manager. Intercut, they're in the castle intercut. We reveal that the man on the phone is Shaw. Well, I heard what happened down there today, Mike. Well, boys, it was nice knowing you. Impressive display you put on there. You calling to fire us or arrest us? Neither. I'm calling to hire you. So what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yesterday I was planning on selling this store, but I spoke to the potential buyers, and from what I've heard, your store showed the most incredible display of store loyalty I have ever seen. You're a family and a winning team. I'd be a fool to break up that team. The store is no longer for sale. Shaw hangs up. Mike turns to the nerds, yells a la Braveheart. Victory! For what? For what? Tell us. Hey, tell us what happened. You weren't on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> interior, exterior Chuck and Morgan's apartment at the courtyard. Chuck and Morgan enter. Chuck sees Awesome. Needs to talk to him. Turns to Morgan. Hey, uh, keep those meatball sandwiches warm, all right? I'll be right in. Hey, uh, I spoke to Shaw. I heard what happened. The ring was going to use me as a decoy. You said I was safe, bro. You are. You will be. We're going to do everything we can to protect you. I promise, okay? Okay, Chuck. Awesome heads off. He's not okay. He heads into Ellie and Awesome's apartment. Awesome's told Chuck he's okay, but he's tired of living like this. He paces as Ellie reads a travel magazine. You okay? Ever since this morning, you've been a nervous wreck again. Babe, we need to get away. We just got back. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about really getting away. You know, just the two of us. Okay, uh, where? Cabo? Uh, well, no, further. Hawaii? Further. I'm talking about Africa, okay? We'll, we'll join, we're gonna join Doctors Without Borders, huh? Doctors Without Borders? Africa, Devin, you didn't even wanna go to France. No, this is different, babe. Uh, I, I'm just talking about you and me traveling the world. Come on, what do you say, huh? I don't know what to say. Say yes, okay? I mean, this is, this is crazy. We can't just get up and leave. I mean, what about Chuck? I'm the only family that he has. Well, Chuck can take care of himself. He's 28 and he works at a buy more. Trust me, okay? There's more to Chuck than meets the eye. You really think he'll be okay? I don't know. But, but, but this isn't about Chuck, okay? It's about us. Off Ellie, apprehensive but thrilled at the same time. Interior castle night. Casey, Shaw, and Sarah. On a monitor, they can see Chuck and Morgan playing video games in Sarah's, in Chuck's apartment. The ring knows about castle, does this mean we're gonna have to shut down the operation? No, the ring shut down all communications. They never had a chance to let their superiors know about their discovery. That'll buy us the time we need to put together a full offensive. Take them down once for all. Sarah can see that Shaw has something on his mind. So what's wrong? The ring had me dead to rights today in Malibu. So why didn't they kill me? They consider this a beat. Now, Shaw and Sarah head out, leaving Casey alone. Casey starts his paperwork. We cut to Morgan and Chuck's apartment in the living room. Chuck and Morgan play Duck Hut, eat Subway, and drink grape soda. Whoa, that was amazing shooting. Hold on a second. You didn't flash, did you? That's cheating, Chuck. Come on, man. So, Sarah and Casey are really spies, huh? Yeah, yeah, they're great. I trust them with my life. Back in Castle. Casey fills out paperwork. He hears a phone ring. It's coming from his telephone operator's bag. 
He reaches in, removes the ring phone he found in room 4305. The ring phone continues to ring. It's glowing. Cautiously, Casey answers the phone. He puts it up to his face. Hello, Colonel Casey. It's been a while. 